Inshallah Ta'ala, I would like to spend this khutbah uh, looking at a couple of different things. The qualities of the quintessential believer's character, akhlaq al mu'minin, and also what that translates into when we look at love of Allah and His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. First of all, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says in the Quran, Wa innaka la ala khulukin azim. Speaking directly to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, ala khuluk. Now, the particle ala in Arabic, usually the word that precedes ala is something that is tangible or concrete. This is standard Arabic. But in rhetoric, when an intangible, something that is not concrete, something that is abstract follows ala, the meaning of that is tamakkun, it is mastery. Verily, verily, you have mastered magnificent character. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to his Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This khuluq of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has mastered ethics. إِنَّمَا بُعِثْتُ لِيُتَمِّمَا مَكَارِمَ الْأَخْلَاقِ He said sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, I was only sent to perfect character or noble ethics. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam, Al-Birnu Husnul Khuluq, that righteousness is good character. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam, Inna min ahabbikum ilayya wa aqrabikum minni majlisan yawm al-qiyamati ahasinukum akhlaqan, that indeed the most beloved of you to me and the closest of you to me on the yawm al-qiyamah are those of you who are best in character. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam, Akmalul Mu'mineen Imanan, Ahsanuhum Khuluqan, that the most perfect believers are those, who are the most perfect believers with respect to faith, Iman, are those who are best with respect to character. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam, Ma Shay'un Athqalu Min Mizan Al Mu'min, Yawm Al Qiyamati, Min Khuluqin Hassan, O Kama Kala Alaihi Salatu Wasallam. There is nothing weightier on the scale of a Mu'min, on the Yawm Al Qiyama, there's nothing heavier, weightier than good character. This is what he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. However, when we talk about good character, we are not talking about good, good character in lieu of performance of righteous, righteous action. We do not imagine an absolute bifurcation between iman and a'mal, that these two things are not mutually exclusive. In other words, somebody who says, I don't need to fast and pray and give zakah because I have good character. Such a person is living in a state of ghurur, delusion, because righteous action is a function of good character. The ibadat of the Prophet ﷺ was a byproduct of his good character. To give you one example, Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu wa arda, he relates a hadith in which he says, Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yusalli hatta tarima qadama. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to pray until his feet would swell. Faqila lahu. And it was said to him, Ataf'alu hada wa qad ja'aka anna Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qad ghafara laq ma taqaddama min dhambik wa ma ta'akhar. Do you do this to yourself? And it has been revealed to you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven your future and past sins. And of course, the sin of a prophet is different than our sin. The ulama say, the theologians say, the sin of a prophet is leaving an act of great virtue for an act of lesser virtue. But he's still virtuous, like Abbasa wa Tawalla. He's still virtuous. So with respect to deliberate disobedience, there is no, there is no question. But look at the response of the Prophet Do you do this? Why do you do this? Allah has forgiven you. Athala akunu abdan shakura. Shall I not be a grateful servant? His prolonged prayer was a reflection of his character virtue, of shukr. So if you really love somebody, you will demonstrate that love. This is Habibullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is the beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he loves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you love someone, you will naturally show your love towards that person. Imam al-Hassan, he asked his brother, Imam al-Hussein, to ask their father, Sayyidina Ali, karamallahu wajha, 
about the khuluq, the character of the Prophet Sayyidina Ali, he relates a long hadith. We'll give you some highlights. The full hadith is in the Shema'il of Imam Tirmidhi. What exactly is this khuluq azim that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran? Sayyidina Ali, karamallahu wajha. He said, Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam da'im al-bishri. <coughs> the Prophet sallallahu was always cheerful. He was jovial. He was affable. Sahl al-khuluqi. He was easygoing, imperturbable. You couldn't get him angry very easily. This is the opposite of someone that you're afraid to be around. You have to walk on eggshells, as they say, around certain people. Because you might say something and it will set them off. This is the opposite of the Prophet. The Prophet was mild, mild mannered, mild mannered. He was gentle. Laysa bi fadbin wala khalid. He was not harsh or coarse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Fabi ma rahmatin min Allahi lin talahum. Walau kunta fal walau kunta fadban khalid al kalbi lan fadu min hawlik. It is part of the incredible mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you have lean, you have gentleness. If you were harsh or hard hearted, you would have seen people flee from your presence. The Prophet Sallallahu character was one of gentleness, but he was principled. He did not compromise when it came to Tawheed, and when it, when it came to theology, and when it came to Islamic morality, Abrahamic morality, which is under attack right now, especially in universities. He did not, he did not, uh, he wasn't, to use the language of the youth, he wasn't a sellout, but he had beautiful character. And he had long suffering. He was forbearing. Amr ibn al-As fought against him for over 20 years. Over 20 years, he's trying to actively kill the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ never gave up on him. He showed him beautiful character. I was in a masjid one time in a, group, in a youth halakha. And the Christian brother was in the masjid. And the Christian brother was asking some questions. They weren't disrespectful. They were just questions academic questions and another brother walks into the masjid and he says he listens for two minutes to the Christian and he says to us you know these kuffar Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sealed their hearts he's made them blind he's deafened their ears I said who are you talking about this brother you just met you're calling him a kafir already Do you know anything about him to say someone's a kafir means you're, you're consigning this person to the flames of hell. Yes, his belief is kufr. He worships Isa alayhi salam. لَقَدْ كَثَرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْمَسِيحُ بْنُ مَرْيَمُ It's kufr. This is clear. But you don't know this person's end. Don't give up on him. The Prophet ﷺ did not give up on people. Amr ibn al-As became Muslim eventually. And the Prophet ﷺ showed him so much ihsan. So much love, so much love that Amr ibn al-As he thought that he was the most beloved person to the Prophet This is how the Prophet made you feel, like he were the most important person. So Amr ibn al-As, he was feeling some jur'ah. So he came to the Prophet and he said to him, Ya Rasulullah, ayyu nas ahabbu ilayk. O oh, Messenger of God, who do you love the most amongst the people? Expecting the Prophet ﷺ to say, oh, it's you, isn't it obvious? Look how I treat you. And the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Aisha. He said his wife, our mother Aisha, radiallahu ta'ala anha wa arda. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with her. No one knows a husband like a wife. That's what I tell the brothers in counseling. No one knows you like your wife, right? And look at how she describes the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi We'll get to some of these hadith, inshallah ta'ala. So then Amr ibn al-As, he said, Mina rijal, from the men. Don't worry about the women. Who do you love the most from the men? And the Prophet said, Abu Ha, her father, not Abu Bakr, the father of her, Aisha. Thumma man, Umar. And then Amr ibn al-As, he said, he named a few other men, but I wasn't one of them. I shouldn't have asked him. 
But this is, this is the prophetic ethos. This is how he would make you feel. Sallallahu alayhi wa wasallam. And people had longing for him. The Sahaba loved him with an incredible love. Because he is the most praised. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sayyidina Ali said, Kana ahabba ilayna. Kana sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ahabba ilayna min kulli shay. Wa min al ma'il barid ala dhamma. He said the Prophet ﷺ was more beloved to us than anything. And that shay, when you say shay, that means creation. Because this comes from sha'a yasha'u. Something that's willed into being. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not a shay. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not willed into being. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who wills into being. So Sayyidina Ali said the Prophet ﷺ, he was the most beloved thing to us. Even more so than cold water over extreme thirst. What is the analogy here for the, for the Arab, for the desert Arab? What does cold water represent? It represents life itself. That they love the Prophet ﷺ more than life itself. This is the love of Sahaba. And Nabiyu awla bil mu'minina min anfusihim. The Prophet is closer to the believers. The Prophet is more beloved. He's more dear to the believers. Even more so than their own selves. Even more so than their own selves. They prioritize the likes, the, the love of the Prophet over the love of their own families. Hadith in Bukhari, La yu'min wa hadukum hatta akuna habba ilayhi min waladihi wa waladihi wa nasi ajma'in aw kama qala alayhi salatu wa salam. I swear by the one who holds my soul in his yad. None of you truly believe until I am more beloved to him than his parents, his children, and the whole of humanity. Well, how do we gain this love for the Prophet Wasallam? This, this incredible love. How do we get this type of mahabba, which is unconditional love? It's through ma'rifa, intimate gnosis, intimate knowledge. This is the way you cannot love something you don't know. What are you always talking about? This is how you can tell what you love. What's on your tongue? The heart is the revelator of the tongue. Whatever is coming out of your mouth is proceeding from the heart. If you're always talking about this or that celebrity or food or some TV shows, what are you talking about? Money, even your family, your children. This is what you truly love. This is what you truly love. I'll tell you a horror story. A Muslim doctor told me he worked in a, in a hospital, the Muslim ward of the hospital. He said, you won't believe how many Muslims refuse to say the Shahada when they're about to die. A'udhu billah. Nas'alallahu al-afiyah wa salama. Because at the point of death, the reality hits home. And whatever's in your qalb, this is what's going to come out. You don't want to hear that. You want to hear your favorite song. You want to be around your kids and family. You want that old story about high school or college. This is dangerous. The affair is serious. We have to take our lives seriously. Don't fall for this frivolity and play. Take it serious. Cultivate love of the Messenger وسلم. His love is love of Allah. Sometimes people say this is a misguided statement. They say, oh, if only, if only we loved Allah as much as we loved the Prophet. This is a misguided statement. The only reason why we love the Prophet وسلم, is because he's Rasulullah. Rasulullah, the Messenger of God. Mudaf, mudaf ilayhi. Construct noun, absolute noun. Who is the owner of Rasul? Allah. Why do we love the Quran? Some words on a page in a book. Why do we love this book? Why? Kitabullah. Kitab Allah. The book of God. Why do you love the Kaaba? A few bricks. Baytullah. This is why. Cultivate love for the messenger through gnosis of the messenger. Ma'rifah of the Prophet ﷺ. How do we gain ma'rifah of the Prophet ﷺ? People, they don't know one hadith. I read an article one time in a Christian newspaper. It was called The Greatest Book Never Read. The Greatest Book Never Read. And it was about the Bible. And this Christian journalist, he said he went to churches at random. 
and ask people coming out of a church, people who were parishioners in a church, who just attended church, and he asked them at random, can you name the four Gospels in the New Testament? He said 50% of church-going Christians could not, get, could not name the, fourth, the four Gospels in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They couldn't name them. I told this to my teacher. He said, don't be surprised. Maybe 50% of Muslims who walk out of Salat al-Jum'ah cannot quote one hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi alayhi wa sallam. In Arabic, ad-dinu nasiha balighu anni walaw ayah convey from me even one, one statement. One statement. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكِ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ We did not send you except as an incredible mercy for all of humanity. We quote this ayah, 21-107 in the Qur'an. And people say, well, how, 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 what does that mean? Demonstrate it to me. How is he a mercy to all of humanity? And we can't give an adequate answer. The Qur'an is a bold book. It's very bold because the author is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we have fallen short. We have fallen short collectively of defending the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an. And people have skewed perceptions of our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Of how he dealt with people, how he dealt with his enemies, how he dealt with sahaba. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away, many sahaba never recovered. They never recovered. Sayyidina Bilal, he couldn't even do the adhan in Medina. He had to leave Medina because everything in Medina reminded him of his beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu message saved Sayyidina Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu wa arda in every way possible when he was being tortured by his so-called slave master in the burning deserts of Mecca. It was the risala of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that took him from that position and put him on the Kaaba to give the adhan. You don't think he loves the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? You know, he's going to die for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He couldn't even make adhan. Everything reminded him of the Prophet. He went to Syria in Damascus where he lived for over a year. Imam al-Sufqi says that, say that, that the Prophet Sallallahu came to Bilal in his dream and said, Ma had al jafa ya Bilal? What is this aversion, O Bilal? Why are you estranged to me? Isn't it about time for you to visit me in Medina? Isn't it about time? So Sayyidina Bilal comes into Medina after a year. And as soon as he comes in to the sacred precincts of Medina Tul Munawwara, he begins to weep uncontrollably. He can't stand it. He goes into the masjid. And Sayyidina Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, he sees him and he says, This is Bilal. Give us one adhan like he used to give in the days of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Sayyidina Bilal said, I can't do it. Sayyidina Umar saw him and said, give us one adhan like he used to give. Let us remember the ayam of the Rasul. He said, I can't do it. So al Hasanain, Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein, the grandchildren of the Prophet ﷺ, who look like the Prophet ﷺ, according to our sources, from the neck down, Imam al Hussein looks like the Prophet ﷺ. From the neck up, Imam al Hassan looks like the Prophet ﷺ. So here, Sayyidina Bilal is looking at, at reflections, prophetic reflections, illuminations, of refractions of the prophetic light. He's looking at them and he said, Give us one Adhan. He said, I'll do my best. He climbs the uh, the tower, he says, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashadu wa la ilaha illa Allah. Ashadu wa la ilaha illa Allah. Ashadu anna Muhammadan. And he fell down. He collapsed. His knees give out. He couldn't even say the name of his beloved. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Unconscious in a swoon that carry him out of there. This is the love of Sahaba. We have to cultivate this love. We have to cultivate this love through ma'rifah. Inshallah ta'ala. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fastaghfiru innahu huwa al-ghafoor rahim
الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى ساداتنا وإمتنا أبي بكر عمر عثمان وعلي ورضي الله تعالى عن أصحاب رسول الله إجمعين. We need to cultivate the love of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam through ma'rifah. How do we gain ma'rifah? Read the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And if you've read it, read it, read it again. And if you read it again, read it another time. Read it in a different language. Read a different translation. Keep reading with an intention of ma'rifah that leads to mahabbah. Get to know the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Get to know what he's done for us. In Sahih Bukhari, we are told Kitabul Anbiya. That human beings on the Yom Al Qiyamah, they will go to different prophets, and they will ask for shafaa, and they will say nafsi nafsi, Nuh alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam, Ibrahim alayhi salam, Isa alayhi salam. All of these prophets, nafsi nafsi, they will go to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Ana laha, I am for this, and he will go make sajda beneath the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa taala. Ya Muhammad irfa' rasak wa shfa'tu shafaa. Oh Muhammad, raise your head and ask. Raise your head and ask. Ask what? What will the Prophet ﷺ ask for? Shafa'a for his ummah. You see, our parents are responsible indirectly for our earthly existence. Ultimately, Allah is the cause of everything. The Prophet ﷺ is the cause of our eternal existence. He is al al shafi' wal mushafa'. He is the one who intercedes and the one whose intercession is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَالضُّحَى وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا سَجَى مَا وَدَّعَكَ رَبُّكَ وَمَا قَلَى وَلَلْآخِرَةُ خَيْرُ لَكَ مِنَ الْأُولَى وَلَسَوْفَ يُعْتِيكَ رَبُّكَ فَتَرْضَى Soon will your Lord give you something and immediately it will please you. Imam al-Suyuti mentions when this ayah was revealed to the Prophet sallallahu he said, لَنْ أَرْضَى وَوَاحِدٌ مِنْ أُمَّتِي فِي النَّارِ I will never ever be uh, pleased while even one person from my ummah is in the fire. This is the concern. حَرِيسٌ عَلَيْكُمْ عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا عَنِتْتُمْ It crushes him that you should perish. Deeply concerned is he about you. حَرِيسٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَعُوفُ الرَّحِيمِ Get to know him through sirah. Get to know him through khasais, through literature that speaks of the uh, unique qualities, the distinctive qualities of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Qualities that no other Prophet had but him. Imam Abdul Iz, uh, Ibn Abdul Salam, in his book, Bidayat to Sul Fi Tafdeel Rasul. Get this book, it's very short treatise, 40 pages, 42 types of distinction he mentions. That the Prophet ﷺ has tafdeel, he has eminence over all the other Prophets. brother, the Quran says, don't make distinctions between Prophets. Yes, I'm not, I'm not making a distinction. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes a distinction. Prophets have different degrees, and his degree is the highest. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, read Khasais, read the Shama'il of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that deal with his outward and inward qualities. The Sahaba described his character, his khuluq, they also described his khalq, his physical, his physicality. Why would they, des why would they describe his physicality? One time a student said to me, this is just a waste of time reading about the physical description of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I asked him, did Sahaba waste time? They wasted time, Sahaba? No, they waste no time. Then why did they mention these things? Why did they mention he has 11 white hairs on his temples? Why did they mention something so minute? Why? Because they love him. And you want to know everything about your beloved. You, you just don't want to know what your beloved said. You want to know everything. How, how was he standing when he said it? What did he look like? What color was his turban? What did his beard look like? What did his sandals look like? This is uh, the Sahaba obsessed with the Prophet ﷺ because this obsession is healthy because ultimately it's for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything is about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq.